Hi, I'm Jeff Ludy, the owner of Houston Window Experts, and today we're going to talk about how to replace windows in a brick opening. It's a very common question people ask us all the time. Hey, Jeff, my house is not a new construction house. I've been living in my house for six months, six years, 60 years, whatever the case is, and now I want to replace my old single pane windows with new double pane windows, but it's in brick. How are you going to do that and not ruin my brick? So today what we're going to show you is we're on, on site here at a job on Lake Conroe, Texas, and we're going to replace these uh, builder grade double pane. These actually happen to be double pane windows already, okay? But they have the grids between the glass and the homeowner doesn't like how that looks. These are not efficient like the new ones are and the quality of the materials are all builder grade materials. And so this is a lake house. It's a place to come out on the weekend. Uh, this homeowner's done uh, three previous projects with us. They want quality, they want it done right. And so that's why we're out here today. So the first thing you need to know about um, windows re being replaced in brick is that if you know what you're doing and it's done right, you can actually do it without damaging the brick at all. In fact, this house is actually a not typical example. The brick on this house was done so well. The construction is so great. Typically what we see when, when the quality is not nearly as good is if you look up here in this corner, See how that, that little piece right there in the corner and right there where that meets? Usually right there, if the house brick is not very good, we start to see some cracks already there on one of those uh, mortar joints or up here in this other corner. And, and a lot of times when the quality is not nearly as good, we see a whole lot of uh, wavy distortion here on, on the brick. And so this was just done so well to begin with. And so I think that's why this particular house is going to give us um, a real good example of quality when we started and quality when we're done. You know, there's two types of quality. There's quality you see and quality you don't see. And uh, we, we think both are important. And so the first thing you start with when you're replacing a window in brick is taking a correct measurement. And the question is, well, then what is the right measurement for uh, replacing windows in a brick home? Well, you're gonna have to measure the window in more than one place because even though this window may have started, as a 47 and a half inch window, it doesn't mean that a 47 and a half inch window is gonna work here today. So let me give you an example. I'm gonna measure in a few different spots. So I'm gonna start down here at the bottom and the window right here is 47 and three quarter. Okay, that's what the opening is from brick to brick. If I go and measure in the middle, cause you can see how that piece of brick right there kicks in just a little bit. Here I'm 47 and seven eighths. So you see there's already a difference there. If I go up high, and I didn't bring a ladder, but when Jeremy measured this, he did. Uh, if I measure right up here, I'm 47 and a half. So what does that mean? Well, if, if I'm 47 and a half at the narrowest point, I can't go with my 47 and 7 eighths. If I measure the window to 47 and 7 eighths, I replace this window with a 47 and 7 eighths inch window, what's going to happen is I won't be able to fit it in up there. That makes sense, right? So I have to take the narrowest measurement. And we usually measure in about three places at least, maybe four or five, because it will vary. And we have to find the narrowest size, the narrowest measurement on here. And then what we do is we like to deduct about an eighth of an inch. That's gonna give us a 16th of an inch breathing room on each side in order to be able to fit this window in. If we get the window a little bit too tight, then what might happen is for us to get it in, we have to do a little bit of pounding on it. We do a little bit of pounding, we might end up cracking the glass. Also, we want a little bit of room for the house to expand and contract. And, and about an eighth inch is, a, is just kind of ideal for that. You have to remember that when you're buying windows for your house, they're gonna be custom made when you have an existing home. So why not go ahead and get the best measurement we possibly can? Some people would try to save money by just ordering a 47 and a half inch window because a 47 and a half inch window is a standard size because standard sizes are gonna cost less than custom sizes. So we don't wanna do that. It might cost another 10%, but don't you want it done right? Don't you want it done to the very best possible uh, scenario that it can be? And so that's what we're gonna do here. We've got this window at 47 and three quarters of, a, of an inch, so that that, and then we took off the, the, uh, the eight so that we can get the best fit possible. So what will we do then when there's a gap, right? Because we know that we're gonna be at the narrowest spot and we're gonna have a little bit of a gap down here at the bottom where it's a little bit wider. You'll see when we show you how we take this window out, but we'll actually have some nice closed cell foam that we'll be able to put in there so that we can go ahead and seal that up and make sure that no water or bugs or dust or dirt or anything's gonna penetrate 
especially not water, right, um, into this house. That way it'll keep it safe and keep it dry. So we take our width measurement, then we take our height measurement. Same thing again. We go right up to the top of that lintel, come down to the very bottom here, and we see that that's 59 and a half. And then look over here. Over here, uh, it's 59 and 5 eighths. And over here, we're almost 60. So we're gonna have to go with that 59 and a half. We'll take an eighth off of that. And so we'll be at 59 and 3 eighths. And that way we can get this window in here really nice, really well done. Now the trick is how to get a window out without destroying this brick. And if this brick wasn't nearly as good, if we had issues with cracking or mortar issues, things like that, we'd end up damaging the brick. And what good would that be if you called me out to fix your window problem and then I created a brick problem? Not good. So that's where you want a professional, somebody who knows what they're doing. And we're gonna introduce you to Brandon in just a minute. He's one of our crew leaders who's got a lot of experience removing windows and brick. And we're gonna show you how we do that. Okay, so we're about to start taking this window out of brick. This is Brandon. Uh, Brandon is our lead crew um, installer on this project right now. He's got, how many guys we got here today? Brandon? We got 14 guys here today. 14 guys here today, which brings up a good point. I was talking to one of our competitors. You know that they have two man crews, just two men on a crew. And so what does that mean? I said, what if you have a job with like 20 windows? They said, oh, we're there all week. I'm like, golly, I wish my clients uh, knew about that because they wouldn't choose that company to do their job. Nobody wants to have two people working in their house for a week to replace 15 windows or something. Right. We're gonna, are we going right. to do this in one day? Yes, sir, in one day. We're going to do this one job day in is one awesome day. Take. Okay, so it's a beautiful day. We've got some nice weather. It's fall. It's not quite as hot as it normally has been. And so Thank God. we're going to talk about what we're going to do here. So tell us, kind of start off with kind of a big picture view. What's okay. it going to take to get this window so out? So first, step by step, after we cover everything on the inside to keep everything clean, we're gonna take this sash out. Now this is an operable sash that actually folds into you, so it actually makes our job a little bit easier for this window here. Second, we're gonna come on the, in, on the outside and we're gonna heat up the glass and cut it out, and it's actually gonna to come towards the inside. Take that glass out, the frame comes piece by piece. Okay, so let's go inside and check out the first step. All right. All right, so we're inside. Go ahead, Brandon, tell All us what right. you're gonna do. So first, we're gonna unlock the window, push it up till we have a gap to where we can operate it. And these actually come right to you, very easy. These are the release clips right here that allow us to do that. Then we're gonna take one side up, and the other side out. Man, that's there cheating. Anybody can, <laughs> anybody can replace a window when it's this easy. All now, right. they're not all this easy though, are they? No, they're not, not at all. You're gonna take that straight to the trailer. And next, we're gonna take out your release clip, or your, your clips that actually hold the glass in. Now these are already double pane, right? Correct, correct. What's, what's harder, a double pane or a single pane to get out? Uh, it different, differentiates. Uh, so this double pane is actually not the easiest to take out, but some are, they actually fall out. The seals are ready to be replaced, ready with the new window. But these here, I actually still have a bit of glue on them. As you can see, having some trouble getting the clips out. Is there a chance that sometimes the glass will break when you're trying to get it out? Yes, there is. Okay. So we have a special thing that we do to keep the glass from uh, coming into the house if it did break while we're doing it. And uh, actually it's such a proprietary secret that we're gonna not use it on this particular window. Of course, we always cover everything. We always put down tarps. But in this particular window, we're not gonna show you what that is because it might actually give our uh, competitors, who by the way, watch our videos a lot. Um, we don't wanna give them. Hey man, we try to stay in business, right? It's kind of like the, the chef with his secret sauce. It's job security for us. Okay, so Brandon got those, uh, those glazing beads or glazing stops as they're called off on the inside. Actually, this is aluminum. A lot of times the ones you see are plastic and the plastic ones actually come out easier. Right. So this That's is, like, as far as like builder grade, this is like at the top end of builder grade. Still pretty much a piece of junk, but a much better grade of, um, of the builder grade stuff. So what's gonna happen now? All right, so now that we have the glazing beads taken off, we're gonna go ahead and heat up the glass on the outside and pry it towards the inside. And why do you have to heat up the glass? Because there is glue that actually holds that glass to the frame. So we need to get rid of all that, cut that all away, so that way that glass can fall in towards us. So this is gonna be better to be able to take it out in one piece than to grab a hammer and just smash it out? Absolutely, much safer for ourselves and the customer. Yeah, so in my industry, there's two types of installers or installation types. One's called uh, slow and go, which is what we're doing. Yep. We're going slow, but we're doing it right. And the other is called smash and dash. No, literally, smash and dash. Like we have guys that call our office and say, 
hey man, I run a smash and dash crew. You guys looking for help? We're like, no sir, not at all. <laughs> so normally a job like this, we're gonna have 14 guys. We're gonna do the thing in one day. A lot of my competitors will show up with five guys, still do it in one day. But you're gonna spend six months cleaning up uh, glass out right. of your pool. Your puppy's gonna be licking his paws. I mean, there's a lot of reasons you don't want smash and dash. The, the main one being that it's really not a good thing for your house and they end up doing damage and stuff. So right. let's go ahead and do that. All right. So as you get the glue heated up, do you have to leave it on there for, for quite a bit or is that gonna depend on the, on the window and how much glue it has? That depends on the amount of glue that it does have, yes sir. Oh, I see it releasing now already. Yeah. Okay. So usually the top and the bottom pieces, parts of the glass, those are usually glued the best. The sides usually come out pretty, pretty easy as you see there. So Brandon, how long have you been doing this kind of work? I'm going on six years. I actually, right out of, right out of school, uh -huh. I started working for my father. Yeah. Who was doing windows at the time. So yeah. he taught me everything he knew. Now I'm at where I'm at today. So you're a second generation window professional, huh? That is right. Family, kids? I have two children yeah. and I have a, a lovely wife at the house. Good. Well, look at that. So now, now we got the whole glass out in one piece. Uh, how much glass did we get on the floor? Zero. Zero. Okay. Not any at all. Amazing job. Good job Thank on you. that. Thank you. All right. So what's next? So next we're going to take out the catch bar here and then we're going to collapse the frame using a crowbar that is backed with this here one by four to keep your brake from cracking. Oh, so this so is kind, if, so this kind of save your brake there. So. Okay, so if you spread out the weight, you're not putting too much pressure in exact, one spot. Exactly. All right, I'll get out of the way. Let you do your job. All right, so we've got the frame out, collapse the frame out. Uh, do you see any brick damage at all? I don't. I think we did a great no, job, sir. didn't we? Yes, sir. No brick damage, okay. That's the difference between uh, an amateur and an expert. Now, one of the things I wanted to point out to you is if you notice here on this frame that came out, see these nail holes, see that nail coming through there? That's how this window was installed when it was uh, originally on the house before the brick went up is back behind the brick, this actually went up against the edge and then it was nailed into place. So when we pull this window out, we have to take out that nailing fin. They call it the nailing fin or some people call it a flange that's over there behind, behind the side of this brick and you can't get to it. So that's why you saw us pulling this way, not pushing in or pulling out. We Correct. collapse the window frame down on top of itself like when you collapse a, a tent. Mm -hmm. Now, the thing that we're gonna do though is we're gonna show you how we're gonna seal this back up because one of the things that we've done by pulling out that nailing flange is now we've, we've actually compromised the seal between the house and the existing window because that's where it was sealed before. Right. Now we're going to seal it in a different place. I will make one observation though. If you notice, if you come up here and take a look at this, you'll see this is the nailing fin. This is the edge of that window. Look on the inside. Look how much caulking they used on this window. See how much caulking they used? They used zero. There's no caulking at all between this window and that house. Anything we did at this point would be better than what they had, but I'm just showing you what sometimes you see in new construction is the guys didn't want to spend a dollar fifty or whatever it cost them to put the world's cheapest caulk on the, one of the world's cheapest windows. But we're not going to leave it like that. When <laughs> we're done, not. we're done. this window is not going to leak, guaranteed, for as long as a homeowner owns this house. Okay, so what's next? All right, so now we're going to clean off the brick. That way our window can actually slide right in there. All right, so Brandon, now you got all this uh, mortar chipped out of the way and we're gonna vacuum all this up here in just a minute to get all the debris out. Uh, I see that they have an alarm system, the old style contact alarms where this part goes into the bottom of the window frame and then that sash that you took out from the inside has another piece and when these two connect, the alarm uh, is activated. Correct. correct. Tell me, what, what do we do? I mean, I guess it's up to the homeowner, right? But what do we normally yes. do in a case like this? So if if they're actually deactivated and they don't use them, which typically nowadays they go wireless. So if they don't want to use the old wired ones, what we'll do is we'll cut them, twist them together, and tie them together with some black electrical tape to prevent any house fires or any damage like that. Um, then we'll just tuck them away, right, but right between the brick and the backer boards there. So we just make it disappear if they're not going to use it. Correct. If they are going to go wireless, obviously it's not going to matter. And most everybody's gone to wireless now. They like wireless. 
but what would we do if they do want to reuse them? So what we'll do is we'll actually cut the wire, twist them together, same, use the same black tape, and we'll actually leave them towards the inside of the house. So that way they can use those same wires and just have new connector pieces for both the sash and the frame. Okay, so the homeowner can have their alarm company come back out after we're done, but we're gonna leave these wires accessible on the inside so they can yes, go sir. ahead and connect the new connectors to them, yep. correct? One uh, particular thing that's different about this particular house is the window we pulled out of here was an active window. In other words, it operated. The homeowner's chosen, in this case, to go back with an inoperable window here. So in this case, there would be no reason for an alarm No anyway. need, no need for an alarm. Okay, so what's next? So now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna clean off the sheetrock here. So that way, whenever we have that window in there, we can put a very smooth caulk bead on there. Any old caulking that's protruding out, not only makes our caulking not stick, it also makes it look really messy. So we want it to look clean and we want it to be applied the right way. So it's not just important that it works well, it's also important that it- It looks good. That it looks well, yeah. <laughs> All right, let's do that. Move it. Okay, so Brandon, we've got the old window out. We're all cleaned up. We're ready to put this new window in. One of the things that I wanted to point out, and you can help me with this, is talking about the frame depth of the new window versus the old window. Tell right. me what we encounter in this job, but sometimes what we encounter in other projects. Okay, so this job, actually, we took out three inch frames, and now that's the depth here. Three inch frames, so we're actually going back with three inch frames this time, which is, which is awesome. Uh, typically, We'll take out, you know, just a regular single pane windows out of other builder grade windows, and they come with about two and a half to two and five eighths inch frames. So when we run into that issue, which is not really an issue at all, what we have to do is just cut back the sheetrock and the wood sail at the bottom, so that way we can slide our window in where it fits. Unless we have an opening like we do here, which is brick. So now when we have an opening that brick, usually the brick sticks out quite a bit past the window there. So it allows us to actually just set the window in against flush against the sheetrock that's already there without cutting it and still have enough room for a good caulk line and a good reveal of your brick as well. So if you do have to cut back, we call that a cut back yes. in our industry, you're gonna take off usually at least half inch, maybe the three quarter, right? Right, of the right not rock. much at all. Yeah. Right, and then you have to cut the windowsill on the bottom as well then to, yes, so the whole thing fits. And then what do we do? Well, maybe we shouldn't talk about it, but let me ask you this. Is it is it real messy or can it be a messy project when you do that because there's dust? Sawdust yep. and stuff in the air? It can if the wrong people are doing it. Okay. But what we do differently is we actually have plastic that goes across the whole entire inside of the window. We tape that with painter's tape to get it really tight so where dust won't be able to flow through there. Even if it is windy, we tape it so good that it's completely sealed all the way around so all that dust comes to the outside, which is what we want. So in other words, there is dust involved. Yes. But if you stand in there with, a, with no plastic on the window and you cut that, and the wind's blowing, all that dust is gonna come into the house. Whereas if you've actually put plastic over the inside and then do the work from the outside, all of that dust is gonna stay on the correct. outside, correct? Yes, okay, sir. so it's just, it's just as much work. As, either way, it's just as much work. But one's smart and the other one's not quite that's, as smart. That's right. And we like to be smart. That's right. Okay, so what are we gonna do now? So now the window is ready to be installed. I'm gonna have a guy go ahead and pick that up and put it into the hole. I'm gonna be on the inside leveling the window, making sure it's square against the sheetrock and then we're gonna add our screws to it. All right, let's do it. Now, one of the things we couldn't show you, we didn't wanna show you, is another secret thing that we do um, that keeps this window from leaking. If you have us out to your house, we'll explain, but we're not gonna do it in this video. Guaranteed not to leak. So what are you doing now? So now I'm checking the level of the window. What, what's that red thing that you're holding? I've never seen other companies use this. This is a level. A level? Yeah, L-E-V-E-L. <laughs> is it important? That's very important for windows and doors as well. So let's say that you just went by eye, like, oh, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna line it up with the house. Mm -hmm. Well, some, sometimes you really can't do that, actually all the time, because some houses, they're shifted. Sheet rock's out of square, the brick's out of square. You gotta put a level on it. Even if it is a picture window and it's not operable, you want the windows level. That's, uh, if, if your window's not level, when the rain gets behind, it's not gonna come out the drip, the drip holes on the outside correctly. And, that's, and you wanna make for sure it has an even flow all the way across. So it's important for us to make sure that the window's true, even if the house isn't. That's right. Because it's gonna that's operate right. best and perform to its best ability. That's right. Okay. Okay. Cutting. Can we go up on this side? So we need to go up on the left side. Oh, actually, hey, we need to go up on Milton's side. 
Okay, so we need to go up on, on that side, is what your level's telling us. Yeah. Go up and on how that would you side. do that? So what we do is we use, we use a, a chisel or we uh, use a screwdriver and we just lift up on one side and we use a shim to go underneath, that way it holds in place. And I've noticed too, we are using those composite shims instead of wood shims, which means that if they get wet, they're gonna stay there forever, right? They're right, not gonna right, they're not gonna rot away. Correct. Yeah, let's get a shim in there. Now this window is the Windsor window. It's called their classic series. It's made out of ultra premium vinyl. And we talk about uh, top of the line vinyl windows because there is such a thing. There's different tiers of grade of any kind of product. And it's a video, we'll link to it in the description here so you can watch that video too. Windsor's in there, it's one of our products. It's really a beautiful window. This particular one is a two-tone window where it has a clay interior, which is what the, window, uh, the client wanted for their window. But yet on the outside, it has actually a black exterior because it's gonna be a real transformation for the look of this house when we're done. All right, so the guys put some of the composite shims on the outside, they're holding the window in place. We're checking for it to be level and plumb. Cutting, yeah. let's get a shim, let's make it go that way. Yep. So you put the level on the bottom, you get the bottom level now, and what, what did the side tell you? Side shows that we need to go take the top to the right, looking at it from the inside, okay? Do that the same way? I'm sorry? Will you do that the same way? Absolutely, use a shim, we'll put it in the opposite corner, that way it stays. So next we're gonna drive our three inch finish screws right into the studs back behind there. We use six for a window this size just to keep it really stable. Okay, can we talk about that screw for a minute? Absolutely. And we'll get a close up of this for you to see, but this is a special screw. This is actually a polymer coated three and a quarter inch long um, special bit head on that. Was it like a five? Is that a Torx? That's a T10 Torx. A T10 Torx so that it, it's not going to strip out as we put it in because by God if it's stripped out we'd trouble. never be able to, <laughs> we'd never be able to get all the way in. But what I like about this screw is that it has the first two and a half inches it's actually sunk to go in. It's threaded in the positive direction to sink it in and then the last three quarters of an inch half inch are actually counter threaded and that's on purpose because what that does is that serves as a resistance to this portion of the screw that's going into the wall against that side of the window, which is we want to keep in the right place. And now we've basically created a locking mechanism that keeps that window from traveling back and forth as a house moves. And what's important about that is most window companies use the, the disposable cheap screws that come with a window and they'll have a real smooth shank on them. In this case, we don't want a smooth shank because we don't want the window to travel. We want it to stay exactly where we put it once we put it in place. So Brandon, you've got this window level, square, it's plumb. You've got six screws into it. What did you bite behind there? What's behind there that you actually bit into? So there's actually a one by four stud that is attached to your studs that actually run up and you know keep the house from shifting back and forth. Uh, we hit those probably about two and a half inches and the other half inch actually sticks inside the frame to hold it with that the back part of that special screw there. So it's not gonna move anywhere. You've absolutely, really got this thing secure. Absolutely not. And what I like about this system too that we're using is if we did have a problem, let's say this window for some reason had to be pulled out again, mm -hmm. we don't have to do what we did to get the old one out, do we? Absolutely not. It's we so, just re so reverse simple. the screws. Yeah, that's right. Reverse the screws, take them out. And it's, it's worth noting the screws out of the inside so uh, a thief can't unscrew your window from the outside and just step into Correct. the house. Correct, yeah. Yeah. Smart, real yep. smart. Real smart. Yep. Okay, so the window's in. Remember when I talked to you at the very beginning about how to measure this window and how it was not gonna be the same anywhere across here, even though this house looked perfectly straight. Now that we've put a level on it, you'll notice that we can really see the difference between the construction of the house and the window itself. The window's perfectly straight, but if you look over here, look at how much gap we have over there going all the way up that side as a gap until it gets up to the top where it's actually touching the brick. So we had to work with what the house would give us. If you look over here on this side, it actually starts really tight down here in this corner and then you have a gap as it goes up. So that shows you that even a really well-built house is not plumb level and square, but the window must be. So the question then is, what are we gonna do to fix that? Most window companies at this point would go buy a $1.99 tube of the cheapest caulking they could buy at Lowe's or Home Depot, and they would just cram that thing full 
of caulking, which means that after five, six, seven, eight years, and this is on the west wall of that sun hitting on this window, that caulking is going to fail. And so did the seal that you had between the window and the house. We're not going to do that. Instead, we're going to use this product called OSI Quad Foam. This is a um, expansion foam. It's not the stuff you buy at Lowe's or Home Depot. It's actually a really high quality professional grade product that has minimal expansion so that when it does expand, it doesn't end up bowing or warping our window frame. We don't want that. That's not good. And when it actually cures, and it's a fast cure, when it cures, it actually becomes slick to the touch. It's actually a closed cell, not an open cell. So if it did get any moisture ever behind that window, it's not going to retain that moisture and start creating a mold or a mildew issue behind your wall. The water, if it does ever come in contact with this, will actually shed right off the product and back to the outside. So let's go ahead and fill these gaps with that expansion foam, and then we'll uh, go on to our next step. Nice. Okay, so all of the foam's in, and this foam is gonna take about 30 minutes minimum. We'd love to give it an hour if we can to fully cure before we start poking on it and trimming the edges of it and caulking the window. Is that right? Right, right. Okay, so you know like those TV shows where they put something in the bottom oven and they pull something out of the top oven that's already done? That's what we're gonna do here. We have a window over here that we did before this window, so let's go over to that one just to save you some time on this video and go directly to a window that's now ready for caulk. So you've got the foam, all trimmed out. It looks really nice and neat and clean on this window. And then you're going to caulk the window. We're using OSI Quad Max, which is about $12 a tube instead of that $1.99 stuff because we, we know that caulking is probably the weak link on a window install. It's just not going to last nearly as long as a window will, especially in Houston. So you're good at caulking? That's right. Okay. I better be. <laughs> okay. But even, even a really good caulker is not going to take shortcuts. If you notice here, we actually have blue tape around the perimeter. Why did we have to put the blue tape on the perimeter? Gosh, once we take that tape off with that, after we apply the silicone, it's just, it's great. It looks great. Much better than just it being done without tape. So we're not going to freehand it. We're going to stay, what do they call it? Paint between the lines? Huh? That's, that's right. <laughs> okay. All right. So let's go ahead and get started. One of the things you'll notice uh, that Brandon's using here is on this OSI sealant that we're using. It is actually color matched to this particular product um, by OSI. OSI has literally hundreds of colors and they have a cross-reference chart. So we can look up the brand of the window, the color of the series of the window, the color of the window, and then have a, a chart for which caulking to use so that it actually matches the window perfectly. You'll notice it's a l just slightly different right now in the color. I mean, if you can even notice that, I can in person. And it'll be like that until it actually uh, cures. But once it cures, then you're going to basically see what looks like one continuous seam between the window and the caulking. One of the other things, too, about this caulking, this OSI, is it actually is a zero VOC, uh, volatile organic compound. And why does that matter? Well, because this caulking actually gets used on the inside and the outside of the house. And so on the inside, certainly you're living in there with your family. Last thing you want is all these VOCs floating around in the air. Most of the time our homeowners never leave the house while we're doing the project. And so they, they have to live in the house the same day that we hand it back to them. And guess what? Now that the house has great new windows, the house is pretty airtight. So you're not going to get those VOCs escaping quite as easily. And so for that reason, we, we spend the money on, on a zero VOC sealant. And this particular product, what we like about it as well, is it actually has like less than a four hour uh, ready to paint time. So if there are any painting needed to be done, we can do it right away. And also what we like about it is that it, it actually within four hours is ready for rain. So let's say that for some reason we put your windows in and then tonight a big rain shower came. We're not having that caulking uh, run away or dilute or be altered in any way due to the weather. So when he gets done with this, you're going to see a little trick we like to use to actually smooth out that caulking and make it look beautiful. So if you notice here, as Brandon is feathering out this caulking, he's removing some of it. And the reason is because we'd rather put a little too much on there and then take some back off than to not put enough. In fact, OSI standards call for you using a quarter inch worth of the sealant between the two uh, devices that you're connecting. 
so that there's plenty of room there for this to actually adhere and bite. We like to use, we try to go between quarter and three eighths. It depends on what the house is going to allow and how it works within the parameters of the particular project we're doing. But we're okay with spending more money. We're okay with spending more time because we don't, we don't ever want to come back out here unless it's to sell you more windows, okay? Okay, so the caulking's on. It's been, how long since you put it on? Probably a minute or so. Okay, that's it. That's it. So as soon as we're, we're done with, with feathering this out, we don't have to wait. We can go ahead and start pulling the tape. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, we'll pull the tape. Let's look at it. Wow, it's a beautiful edge. And we're still not done, guys. You're really going to love what you see next. By the way, I was just talking to the homeowner. If you look up high, they've got that lintel. See that? It's kind of a little bit rusty. And uh, it's going to be the wrong color. So actually, he already has a painter coming out next week because they're painting the house. We're going to make a video of this uh, when it's all done on another video. I think you're going to love it. And he's going to have him hit that with a wire brush to kind of scrape any of that rust off of there. And then they're going to paint it to actually match the window. So that'll be really nice as well. Just to just to make everything really seamless and tight together, make it beautiful. Okay, so we got all the blue tape off. Looks gorgeous, great sure job. Thanks. But we're not finished. In fact, we could be done and no one would say anything. And we're, there were a couple of secrets that we didn't let you in on, but this one we're gonna let you in on because you're a loyal view of our channel. So uh, tell us what you're gonna do next. So now we're gonna go ahead and wet down the caulk line with a little bit of soap and water. And what that does, it allows us just to make a smooth line because when we take that tape off, of course, you have a ridge where that caulking sticks to it and tries to pull away. So we'll smooth that down. And after that, it looks like it was actually painted on the brick. I see you're putting a little bit of that on your finger as well. Huh? Right, we want it very slippery so that way it doesn't stick to you at all or pull or drag. We want to just lay it flat back down to the caulk line. So that's it. Ta da! The only thing we lack now is cleaning the glass. We're going to go inside and caulk, but we're not going to bother you with that. Same principle on the inside as the outside. And before we're all done, we're going to make sure that the room itself is completely clean. Anything that we brought in, we're going to take out. We put drop cloths down as we come through the house. So we're going to pick up our drop cloths. We're going to give this house back to our homeowner. And I can promise you, this is going to be the most delightful home improvement experience. Mm that he's ever had. Thank you for watching. Brandon, thank you for all your help. Thank you. If you're watching this on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe. Share this with your friends. Hit the little bell so that you get a notification. If you're on our website, you'd like more information. If you live in the Houston area, please fill out the contact form or call us. And by the way, we have a lot of friends, a lot of dealers across the United States that do what we do at a really high quality level. If you live in a city that's not Houston and you'd like for us to maybe help you, rec recommend to you someone that could do great work in your home, Give us a call. We'll see if we can help. Thanks for watching and have a great day.